Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's great to be here. And, and in fact, uh, it's always great to be back in Switzerland uh, and in Zurich. Some people say that uh, people from Basel or Baselbeet have some issues with uh, Zurich. Uh, but I'm going to ignore that because I like uh, being back. And as you may know, I, I studied in Zurich at ETH. And so it's always great, back, uh, great to be back and, and meet old friends and, of course, uh, visit uh, Google Switzerland. I'm also very happy that Switzerland is doing well and that uh, ETH, my alma mater, is, is also doing well in, in all kinds of international uh, rankings. Because in the end, uh, technology matters. You all know that. And if Switzerland wants to be part of the future versus watching the future, then Swiss technology uh, will really matter. Uh, first, um, uh, let me get you a little bit of background on uh, Google Zurich, just so you have a, a feel for, for what we are and what we're doing here. Um, in fact, uh, Google Zurich is the largest engineering office outside of the US. Uh, and that's not an accident. The location, uh, the qualities of the Standort Zurich uh, certainly has uh, something to do with it. We opened it in 2004, um, long, long time ago. Uh, but actually, a relatively short time after we started Google. For all practical purposes, Google kind of started to get traction in 1999. So only five years later, uh, uh, we came to uh, Zurich as the first uh, engineering uh, location in, in Switzerland. And uh, back then, I really couldn't have imagined that today we are 2,000 people uh, in that location. and, and uh, we uh, just opened a new uh, uh, office in, or expanded into a new office in Europa uh, Allee at uh, near, near the train station, which will uh, have room to accommodate up to uh, 5,000 uh, uh, people. And that really is something that is almost unimaginable to me um, because back when we started this, the Zurich office, all of Google worldwide wasn't 5,000 employees. So it's really a, 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 a tremendous success. To me, in many ways, you know, not something that uh, I would have foreseen, uh, but something that obviously I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about. So um, what do all those people do in Zurich? What drives uh, the Zooglers, as we call them, uh, Zurich Googlers? Well, our companies. Uh, motto is to organize the world's information and make it uh, useful and accessible. And so really everything that we do happens in that uh, umbrella. And in order to achieve this, we develop services that help people uh, deal with information, might make their life uh, uh, simpler. And when we develop these services, we, we kind of follow three principles. First, um, we uh, try to find answers to problems that, that matter, that affect a lot of people, that will be useful to uh, a billion people, uh, ideally. Second, we focus on using technology to, to, to serve these answers, to create uh, these, these answers, these, these solutions to the problems. And then third, we really try hard to make our products accessible to everyone, and so they, they can be useful to you whether you are in Switzerland or in the US or in Argentina or pretty much anywhere uh, on the world. So let's look at uh, web search as an example. Now, an ancient example, so 1999, we started with web search. And the goal was to find all the web pages on, on the web. And our first solution was effective but quite simple. It was a page with 10 blue links and pretty much nothing else. So you didn't have pictures or news or maps or the weather at your destination or whether the local store that you're looking up is still open or really nothing, right? No direct answers, just 10 blue links. Today, of course, in Google Search, you have all of these things. You can ask direct questions. You get a direct answer. And in fact, you don't have to type anymore. You can use speech. So in many ways, we've gone way beyond what our original goal was to 
find all the web pages on the web. So does that mean problem solved? No, no, not in a long way. Not really by a very, very long way. So our current development and our current status is really just the tip of the iceberg, if you want. Just the very beginning, and we could still do a lot more to make life easier uh, for people to make our products more useful and more accessible uh, to more people. And so today, I'll be talking about one way, and a way that really permeates many of the improvements that uh, uh, you've seen in Google products in the last few years, and that you will see in the next few years. And that is machine learning. So for example, just recently, our uh, voice recognition and also our translation between languages improved a lot, really just in the last uh, 12 months. And that was thanks to machine learning. And even though, again, even though it improved by a lot, it really is not at the asymptotic end. You know, I expect a lot more to come. We're just at the beginning. Take another example, a Google Assistant. So its goal is to make it easier for you to do the right thing at the right time. You, you can kind of have a conversation with it as if, you be, as if you would have it with a real assistant, and it tries to you know, get things done for you. But imagine the following situation. You're, you know, you're, you're going home after, uh, you're driving home after uh, a day at work, and you tell your assistant, hey, I, I would like to have Indian for dinner tonight. And you know, while you're still driving, you get a confirmation when you're home. You know, the food is there, and, and you have a great dinner. Right? Sounds really simple. Sounds really natural. Sounds like something that an assistant ought to be doing. And yet, we're pretty far away from actually doing that. Because it's a very, very hard problem to understand what you really mean. Of course, we could go special case, this particular case. And we say, hey, you know, if you say dinner and you know, this, like that, here's a special rule. But it then would be very brittle, because as soon as you change a little bit what you're asking for, you know, it would be breaking down and it would no longer work. So finding a general solution to that, even though it's a very simple problem, is a very hard technical challenge. And in fact, often, the hardest thing in technology is to make something simple. So uh, back to machine learning, as I said, you know, we're, we're, we're not done at all, and so we're investing heavily in these uh, technologies. And I'll, I'll walk you through a few examples to kind of show you the impact that machine learning is already having and, and the promise it has for, for, for the future. So take uh, Google Translate, I mentioned it already. We, our first version of Google, Google Translate launched in 2000, uh, 2001, 15 years ago. Back then, we could translate eight languages to English and back. And the translation was you know, not very good. Uh, today, Google Translate works in over 100 languages, covering 99% of the world's population. Right? That is a radical transformation. In fact, you don't have to give it text. You can scan an image, and it translates in real time you know, that image to your language. Right? These, this radical uh, progression is really uh, uh, was enabled by machine learning. And many of these improvements came in just the last two years. And they're all based uh, uh, on machine learning. Or to give you another example, Google Photos, it, it helps you. It can analyze the photos that, uh, you know, thousands of photos that you take during a vacation. And it can help you find the specific photo that you want you know, whatever, you know, there I was with, you know, on a horse, you know, on the beach. And you never told it that this picture is you on a horse uh, at the beach. It actually can find that uh, itself. And that is something that was really unthinkable, like literally unthinkable technically just five years ago. And today you have it in your pocket. And again, the difference is uh, a computer vision enabled by the most modern forms of machine learning. Or to take a totally different example, Go. Go is probably the most complex board game that uh, has ever been invented. And as recently as a year ago, experts in Computer Go thought it was at least 10 years away for a computer program to beat a professional Go player. And yet, uh, less than a year ago, uh, AlphaGo, Google's AlphaGo, 
uh, won against uh, Lee Sedol, the you know, best player of the last decade uh, with four to one, right? very, very clear uh, victory. So in many ways, machine learning is the future. But actually, it's not just Google who can use it. It's also you who can use it, because through the Google Cloud, Cloud, Google Cloud Platform, we make it available to pretty much any company for them to build their own uh, solution. I'll give you just one example. Um, Airbus, uh, the satellite imagery division of Airbus, used Google Machine Learning to uh, do cloud removal on their satellite images so that it doesn't obscure the actual image. They were able, with a single engineer, in three months, to build a system that had a lower error rate, and in fact, a factor of three lower error rate than the existing system that they had built uh, over a decade uh, with, with many, many people working on it. So this is something that is practical today. Uh, you're also taking advantage of machine learning in many other places at Google. For example, if you use uh, G Suite, Gmail apps, Drive, et cetera, et cetera, like many Swiss companies uh, do, you see a, a, a list of them here to just name a few, TI Media, uh, Ringier, LaForge Holsem, Givaudan, and so on. You know, G Suite has intelligent apps, and I call them intelligent because they use machine learning to make your work smarter. I'll give you just a very brief example. A year ago, we launched Explore in Google Sheets. Explore lets you, uh, lets you use your spreadsheet without understanding formulas. So you can ask questions, for example, how many units were sold on Black Friday, or what are the top three items by sales price, or what's the total cost of jackets last month, and it will, find, it will construct the formula for you and find that answer. And as a very last example, I'll give you an example from medicine. Uh, di diabetic retinopathy is a, an eye disease that leads to blindness, but is very easily cured if you detect it early. And today, to detect it, an expert, a doctor, reads a photo like this, a retina scan of your, of your image. But the problem is, in many parts of the world, there is no doctor that can do this reading, and therefore people turn blind. In connection with uh, doctors and, and uh, international health organizations, we developed a system that shows a lot of promise in being able to do that with machine learning. The early system actually reaches a similar accuracy than a panel of experts uh, using just a photograph. So there's a lot of work still to do, but I'm, uh, but I'm excited about the possibilities of improving healthcare for everyone uh, with machine learning. And to me, what's really amazing is that all of these things are done with an underlying system that is very, very similar. So the actual technology behind Go, or the Sheets example, or the medical example, is more similar than it is different. So it's practical to do things with relatively little effort. Now, while we're still in the early stages, I'm very happy that Switzerland will be part of these early stages and will be part of developing, you know, finding out uh, what's next, because in Switzerland, at Google Switzerland, we have the European Machine Learning Center, and that's where we work on, on problems like this. So the answer to the popular question, who invented it, soon could be Switzerland, or Zooglers, or using Google Cloud Platform, it could be you. So that would be my favorite answer. Thank you very much. Great. Any questions? Just one brief question, was um, as an expert for machine learning and uh, this new technology that is now uh, helping to get more and more automated tasks done by these increasingly intelligent computers, how would you say is this transforming organizations? How will it change them? I think it, it's a. I think its its biggest impact is actually that it can really help collaboration. Like if you look at modern office tools today, they really enable companies to co collaborate much better. And so if you have a, a you know, intelligence assistant in the middle, it can actually help make that, con uh, that conversation, that collaboration work even better. For example, by identifying people that you should talk to. In, in Gmail, for example, there, when you write an email and, and you're missing a person that you usually include, it actually tells you, did you want to include this one? In, in Google Drive, it shows you documents that you're likely to need next. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it really accelerates 
uh, productivity and, and, and collaboration. And that, I think, is the, the most exciting uh, part to me. So it takes away all these repetitive tasks and becomes an assistant, so it would enable people to spend more face time with each other. For example, yes, or just generally to collaborate more effectively with each other. And um, how do you think this is also changing leadership um, and uh, how decisions are made? <laughs> um, uh, you know, I think it's hard to automate management, uh, uh, both the good parts and the bad parts. Uh, actually, the bad parts might be easier to automate. Um, uh, but I think one of the things that is, is very important to realize is that machine learning is deceptive to outsiders in a sense that you know, when you look at, 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 let's say, the eye disease, you know, the fact that a machine learning system can perform as well as doctors in reading uh, these images, that seems amazing. But that is actually much easier than doing many things that a three-year-old can do. And so especially in human interactions, there are many things that we don't even think about that are totally obvious that machine learning has absolutely no chance of getting. And so there actually still is a really, really big gap and so while it works very well for certain image analysis tasks or text analysis tasks, et cetera, in human communication and understanding human communication, that is actually something that is you know, incredibly hard and it's pretty far uh, mm -hmm. from now. And, and I think management and leadership is, has a lot to do with really people interactions, with motivation, with communication. I think ML might assist their machine learning, but I think it's, it's pretty hard for me to see certainly in, in, in this decade, um, how you could, you could ever uh, uh, um, um, replace something there.